I mean, I'd say yes. Um, a lot of it has to do with being in the same system for three years, understanding the concepts that we're running, um, utilizing the help that, that we've brought into our quarterback room and just trying to understand defense a little better and knowing our answers when we were out there. Um, and again, it, it wasn't just me um, and it wasn't just by chance. You know, it was a lot of hard work and um, obviously there's still a lot to improve on and I'm nowhere near I want, where I want to be. Um, but I've had a lot of help along the way and, um, and I truly appreciate the guys that have come across my path and helped me in, in, you know, in regards to my game. Is it, where would you put, uh, you mentioned the familiarity and consistency with the system. Where would you put a growth in your mechanics as a reason for this growth in your production? Well, I mean, I think that's, that's a big part of it. Just understanding my throwing motion um, allows me to, you know, deliver the ball uh, more consistently than the last couple of years. And, um, you know, coach has a lot of confidence when you're able to complete passes on a, on a regular basis. And, um, you know, still a lot of things to clean up though, as far as uh, ball placement and uh, decision-making goes, but um, that can, you know, that, that, that can be fixed, you know, and uh, I'm still learning as we're going along in each game. I feel like it's a different situation that arises and I'm able to learn and grow from it. Appreciate it, Josh. Congratulations. Thank you. Hey, Josh, Shane Fates up in Rochester. Uh, kind of an open-ended question, but what's the biggest thing you've learned about yourself in 2020 as a player? Um, I'd say just knowing, like I said, knowing my mechanics, um, knowing why I missed a throw and what I can do to fix that. Um, when I'm not throwing the ball how I want to, you know, I'm able to kind of find that rhythm back by, uh, you know, just thinking about a couple – things in my mind and uh, allowing myself to, again, deliver, you know, um, consistency in my mechanics. Thanks. Can't hear you, Vic. Nope. All right, Vic, we'll come back to you. I'm going to go to Perino. Hey, Josh. Um, congratulations on the award. Um, Sean and Brian talked a bit about uh, Ken Dorsey, and I think that you you brought brought him up in your conversation with um, Steve Young uh, before the game. I'm I'm curious what what particular things over the course of this little over a year now would you say that you know impact that he's had on you and and things where he's helped you in areas of your game. You talking about Dorsey? Ken Dorsey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, just you know the familiarity that he has with playing the game, being behind um, the center. Obviously, I think that plays a big part in what he's able to talk about, um, what he's able to feel, what he's able to see. You trust it, you believe him, because he's been back there and he's done it. Um, that, he's got the, the mind and the eye of a quarterback. You know, he, he worked extremely hard, you know, whether it be the PowerPoints that he puts together, um, the clips that he puts together, whatever it is. Um, you know, he's talking about the right stuff. He's showing the right stuff. Um, you know, I trust him implicitly. And, um, you know, he's been a huge help and a huge help to our success on offense, you know, seeing things in a different view and, um, you know, showing that to Dable and Dable's been awesome and, you know, allowing him to talk about certain things and concepts that he sees. And um, it's a really, really good relationship that I think that I have with him and with the uh, with Dabes. And uh, it's just a good kind of revol revolving door type of communication. Thanks, Josh. Congrats again. Thank you. Josh, Laurel here. How you doing? Good, good. Uh, I guess there's been a bit, of, a bit of a theme of some philosophical questions being asked you, and uh, I'm going to throw one out. I had one for you as well. We're all competitors, you know, be it, you know, your business or my business. We're all driven in part by fear, which can be a valuable motivator. Um, you've reached the level of consistency for the most part this season. Like, you're in a groove. Um, so when it comes to completions and all this other, and, and, and how you're playing, what might be the one thing you fear might cause you to slip? Um, I mean, really the only thing when I'm on the field, I fear my fear letting my teammates down. And that's, um, you know, as a quarterback of a team, um, your job is to move the ball and score, score points. So when we're not scoring points, that's, that's my biggest fear. And that's putting our defense in a bind if we're not moving – you know, the chains on third down. Um, again, that puts us behind the eight ball and we got to punt the ball away. And um, that, that's, that's what drives me. That's what motivates me. Um, you know, I fear, 
letting the guys who drafted me, this front office and this organization down um, by trading up to, to come get me. And that's uh, basically that's that's the biggest fears that I have. And um, that's, I guess, why in my mind that I work extremely hard. Um, yeah. That's a lot of weight to be carrying. But that's that's the weight that a quarterback carries in the NFL. Is that, is that fair to say? Yeah. I mean, it's everything that I've wanted since I was a little kid. And um, obviously there's pros and cons to – every type of situation that you're in and I'll take the pros um, 1000 times over, over the cons that come with this job. And it's, it's the greatest job in the world, in my opinion. And um, I enjoy each and every day that I get to, to come and be the quarterback for this organization. Well, congrats. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Oh, uh, Vic, it's still not working. Okay. Don't, you just want to type your question, Vic? <laughs> we'll go to Beauvais. Mine working? We good? Yep, I got you. All right, cool. Hey, um, you know, all this talk, congratulations, first and foremost. But I, everybody asks you about Stefan Diggs, and I totally get it. But I feel like we don't talk about Cole Beasley enough. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm just not seeing it as much. Marcel talks about him a lot, though. I'll give him credit there. But what about Cole Beasley has made, you know, your life easier and has made this offense be able to take the next step, particularly this season? Well, I mean – one, the things that he does on the field, um, he is probably the quickest guy on the field at all times, just the way that he gets in and out of his cuts, uh, how he can control his body. It's very unbelievable, and um, I've noticed that since day one, and that's kind of the tricky part about throwing to him early on is if you don't have a feel for him and you don't talk about it enough, uh, he can fake you out. So, one, I think it's that. Two, it's the communication. Um, it's the watching the film. It's – the uh, going over it in practice and just running it over and over again and getting a feel for what his body can do. Um, that's number two. And number three is just the type of relationship and the type of guy that uh, he is and the relationship that we have. Uh, he's, he's great in the locker room. I mean, I don't think you can find one guy to say anything bad about him. I mean, he's just a joy to be around. Uh, he's always got a smile on his face. He's always trying to uplift and, um, you know, he's just the ultimate teammate. And, uh, you know, I love playing with him and he's made, my job a lot easier by kind of seeing it through a quarterback's eyes when he's running routes. And uh, the thing about him, he always wants the ball in his hands. And he, he's a gamer. He's a baller. Um, and I can, I can go on for forever really talking about how uh, much he means to this offense and how much he means to me. Thank you, Josh. Appreciate it, man. Hey, Josh, you can hear me all right? Yep, I got you. All right. Thank you to Bove for recognizing the Cole Beasley gavel. I've been trying to swing that for a while now. But uh, you specifically – Against zone coverage last game, it was the best game of your career. I mean, in terms of yards, completion percentage. And it seems like it's a long way from that week five and week six lull that you guys had offensively. So I'm wondering how big of a focal point has it been for you in this offense, I guess, getting accustomed to succeeding against zone coverage? Um, I mean, ultimately, um, I feel like it is up to me in, in when we have these types of games and guys want to play zone. Um, you know, I trust that our guys are getting to the windows and the spots and I got to be on time and on target with where I put the ball. Um, you know, I, I, I don't really think there's many teams out there that can guard all of our guys. Um, and when we're in zone, again, like uh, Bove was talking about what Cole is able to do and find windows and kind of um, get in the spots that the defense isn't, you know, and I, that's been extremely helpful. Um, but it's just the accumulation of our guys going out there and trying to execute their um, – given task every every given play so um it's it's a total 11 man effort when we're out there in zone and then as an 11 man offense i mean when you can move the ball like that against any type of defense that an opponent's throwing at you do you think it's sending opposing coaches kind of back to the drawing board as we get to the we approach the end of the season in the playoffs um i mean Again, I think each and every week's a different opportunity, a different situation, and um, some teams match up better um, in man. Some teams match up better in zone. And, um, you know, as an offense, it's our our job to find out what we can do, how we can beat them, and how we can hurt them, and um, their given defense. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's ultimately um, really the offensive offense's job to kind of dissect what they're doing and, and trying to get us in the right play calls and. Um, you know, as a quarterback, get us out of the bad ones and, and limit those bad plays. Gotcha. Appreciate your time, man. 
Yep, thank you. Hey, Josh, Dante Laston, can you hear me? Yep, I got you. In seeing the transformation of this passing attack this season, how does it feel to know that Coach Dave will put his complete faith in you to change the course of this offense to what we're seeing now? Um, I mean, it felt good. And I, I think, you know, it's, I guess, my job as the quarterback to move the ball and help this team score points and try to put us in a position to win football games. Um, but, I mean, just the trust that I have in him and he has in me, the communication that we share, uh, the type of relationship that we have, um, I think that all kind of goes into it. And, um, you know, I, I obviously love what he's calling, and he's doing a really good job. And um, as long as we're going out there and executing the way we, we can, um, you know, we're, we're a pretty dang good football team when we're, when we're executing how we, how we can. And uh, when he's got that trust to, to go out there and put it, you know, in my hands, you know, I, like I said, that's going back to one of the early questions I fear, letting my teammates down, letting him down. So, um, you know, it feels good you know, going out there and executing. Definitely. Thank you. Congrats on the award and good luck this Thank weekend. You. Hey, Josh, congratulations on your award, man. Thank you. So last, when you guys played the uh, Steelers last year, Ben did not play. Obviously, he is playing in this one. So your first chance to match up, I know you're not going against him per se, but your first chance to match up with Ben Roethlisberger on the same field. Uh, he's been doing this since you were probably, what, eight years old or so. Um, and you've often been compared to Ben, you know, by a lot of people with your, your, how big you are, your style, things like that. Kind of just give us your thoughts on, on watching Ben throughout his career and, and, and his game. I mean, obviously what he's been able to do in his career, um, winning a couple Super Bowls, um, just the consistency that he's been able to do it on too. And again, I know he, he missed a few games last year, but the way that he plays, the style of the game that he plays, um, he's very hard to bring down. Obviously he's got tremendous arm talent and he's been doing it for a long time. And he's had, you know, a lot of success. And, you know, I'd argue to say he's a, a first ballot Hall of Famer. So um, obviously I'm very humbled to, to be even named in the same conversation as him um, and be compared to kind of what he was when he was, you know, younger. Um, but uh, he's, he's still playing at the top of his game right now and he's got things rolling. They're 11 and one. Uh, the defense that they got, obviously um, the pass rush, the two guys, you know, TJ Watt and, um, Cam, Cam Hayward and you know obviously they lost uh, Dupree which is uh, a really good player too and you know it's uh, you never like to see anybody go down and he was a very tough competitor that we played last year and um, in the back end they got some smart guys and uh, Minka's able to fly around I don't know um, kind of injury talent but they're 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 a really good defense um, you know and it's they're fun to watch obviously when we're not playing I like watching them because um, it looks like they just have a great time you know playing the game uh, they have a great time playing for their coach over there. Everything I've heard about Coach Tomlin has been nothing but, sub, uh, you know, super and fantastic. And uh, I got a lot of respect for him and who he is as a person and as a coach. So, um, you know, I got a lot of respect for, for the organization over there in Pittsburgh. Thanks, Josh.